Welcome back to another episode of the DAP Show. Uh, if you're listening to this on Podbeam, thank you for con- your continuous support. Check it out on YouTube as well, DAP Show. And, um, you know, support there. Leave some comments, like, hit the bell so that you'll be notified next time an episode drops. I'm your host, Derek Asante, and I'm back. Okay. Um, this one is really intended to move people. Let me just go right into it, all right? Socrates told his students to examine every idea on its merits alone. And that's crazy. I think, I mean, it's dope crazy, <laughs> right? So in this episode, we're going to discuss and define critical thinking. What are the benefits to becoming a critical thinker? And finally, how do we develop critical thinking skills? Okay, so that's that's my aim for this episode here, just to throw some things at you, right? Kind of intrigue your thought process and so forth. But before we get into this, let me share a quote from Thinknetic. When we use our intellect to prove a point we have not thought through, we are not thinking critically, no matter how well we do it. We often try to make ideas look better or worse than they are, for our own gain. This is not critical thinking. So then what is it? Critical thinking is great for many things. However, it is a great skill to have specifically when you're speaking or seeking the truth. Okay. It allows you to detect and avoid deception from others and identify facts which are accurate and brings you closer to that truth. This lost art form or skill is tied to our very existence, and many of us are ignorant to this fact. The simple explanation is we don't question existing traditions and ways of doing things. We accept inefficiency and incompetence as the norm. A perfect example to this was COVID, and it was a great example, right? So... Many of our systems today are outdated and irrelevant. And that includes our education system. If you listen to my previous episode, you'll know that I spent some time on that, right? Um, So if you're not sure which episode I'm speaking about, it's the episode entitled When People Matter. So check that out. And, um, um, you know, this idea um, also applies to our criminal system, cultural systems, and social systems. So people with authority often tell us what to believe and we accept it because of various reasons. But the main one is we lack the ability to think critically for ourselves and we also live in fear. Now, a lot of you might challenge that and question that. And that's great. You should. Okay. Uh, It might rub some people the wrong way. Some people might get all defensive before they actually think it through. And those are the people that I need to really take a moment, take a step back and look at the big picture, the overall picture, the impact of this picture in your own life and how it impacts others around you. Right. This is something that is very challenging for people to do, which is look at other people when they're thinking about the world. Oftentimes, it's easier for us to think about ourselves and only ourselves because we are in that state, in that world Um, That society today where it's self-centered, self-serving, and it's always a me first, hence the term me too. Right? I'm using it in a different context, right? But you get my point. Okay? We just simply lack the ability to think critically. We are sheep. As much as you want to say, no, I'm not a sheep, I'm a wolf, I'm this, I'm that. You're a sheep because you comply. Right? In one way or another, you have to be a sheep. In order for you to survive. And in some situations, some scenarios, you're going to be a wolf. Okay? And this is just the nature of how we are. We are adaptable beings. But the problem is, when the large percentage of us are the sheep, and we also lack the critical thinking skill set. Okay? And that's where, as a society, we fall short. Okay? And that's where we fall victim to a lot of our own demise and thinking and ideas. Critical thinking is a way of thinking that involves actively and skillfully analyzing, evaluating, and reflecting on information 
in order to reach a well-rounded conclusion or a decision. That's what critical thinking is, right? It's something that requires you to think independently and objectively. A lot of us think subjectively. We can't remove ourselves from a lot of our ideas. And because we speak from our experience and our opinions, a lot of the times nobody can ever really debunk your ideas because you don't want to let them go. You stood by them, you bounded yourself to them, and therefore you've limited your evolution because of this way of, of being, okay? So in order for you to be a critical thinker through and through, you have to be willing to let go and even question your own ideas and traditions and cultures. But if you're not willing to do any of that, you can't call yourself a critical thinker, unfortunately, right? Critical thinking also forces you to consider multiple perspectives. It forces you to gather evidence, use logic and reason to evaluate arguments and ideas that are thrown in your way, right? Or even ideas that are just existing currently, right? Critical thinking is a valuable skill, right? It can also help you make better decisions, which is clear. I've kind of alluded to that already. It's going to help you solve problems, right? It's also going to allow you to think more creatively. I think those things are pretty important to have. What a skill set to have, right? It's beneficial. You can use it in everyday scenarios and situations, right? You can help it, you know, use it to help others evolve, do better, make better decisions themselves, okay? But you can't be afraid to be a critical thinker. That's the other part that a lot of people don't, don't factor in, is that a lot of us want to be critical thinkers, or we think we are, but we're afraid to ask or question or evaluate, right? Or even assess. And that's where we fall short, okay? There is no one size fits all for critical thinking. However, there are some key steps to help you engage in critical thinking. And I'll share some of those with you, right? For starters, you have to be able to identify a problem, right? Or a question that is presented to you. Before you can start thinking critically about a topic, you need to understand what the problem or the question is that you're trying to solve or answer. That's where it begins, right? You need to have a topic. You need to understand what the problem is, right? Or what the question that is being posed in order to even begin on this journey. So now that you have the question right, or what the problem is, or what the topic is, you have to go to the next step, which is gather the information, right? What information you ask, anything that's going to help me come to a better or the strongest, or the most viable conclusion. That's the information, right? So you've identified the problem or the question, gather as much relevant information as possible, right? This might mean conducting research, take, you know, talking to experts, um, taking notes, consulting reliable sources. Anybody who has some sort of knowledge or experience, right, with this problem or question, speak to them. Read about their thoughts and see how they came to their conclusions. That's your research. So gather as much information as possible. And once you have all that information that you need, analyze it, right? Carefully analyze it in order to identify where the biases may be, the assumptions, right? Or even the inconsistencies, because there will be some, right? This is your job. This is what you need to do as a critical thinker. This involves looking for evidence to support or refute the information, okay? And, and considering the alternative perspectives as well, what other people thought about it who didn't necessarily agree with it. All right, and what their explanations were. You want to consider all that and look into all of that. Don't accept any information without analyzing it. You just can't. Okay? You just can't. It's not going to be useful. It's not going to be conclusive. Right? So once you've done all of that, now you want to evaluate the arguments, right, that are being made. This involves you weighing the strengths and weaknesses, right, all the pros and cons of each argument, and then considering how well, right, they address the problem or the question. 
you have to consider that, right? Now that once you've gotten all this information, this is where the work comes in, right? You've done all this legwork, all this research. Now you have to come to a conclusion. You have to draw your own conclusion based on the information that you've gathered, that you've analyzed, that you've evaluated, okay? Right? You have to draw a well-rounded conclusion, right? And this might involve making a decision, right? Ultimately, you got to take action. You got all this research. Now you got to take action. You got to take a position, right? Formulating a plan of action or offering a recommendation. Where do you stand? After all of this research, you heard other people's opinions, you've gotten their testimonials and all of that stuff. Where do you stand in relation to this problem or question? Okay, then once you've made your conclusion, right, you have to reflect on your thinking process and consider whether you may have missed any information, right, important information, um, maybe overlooked or underestimated certain perspectives, maybe your own biases took place, right? This can help you identify any gaps in your understanding and, you know, to revise your conclusions if necessary, right? And at the end, where you came to that conclusion, you have to now analyze your conclusion if it's actually conclusive to, to the overall question or problem, right? So those are the things that you need to consider, and that's the process when you want to get into critical thinking. There has to be a problem, and you got to vet it, right? You got to do some research, what other people have found over the years and time. And then you analyze all that detail and all that information you evaluated. Then you come to a conclusion of your own. Revise that conclusion by analyzing your own understanding, right? And processes, checking your biases and all that stuff. And then finally, you have a solid um, conclusion, right? At the end that you can present, right? And that's the process. Now, there are a number of things that you must consider, right, when you are also going through this process. Assumptions, okay? you got to consider your own assumptions and other people's assumptions. Unfortunately, our assumptions are unexamined ideas and beliefs that we take for granted. Many of our plans and actions are based on our own assumptions, right? What does that mean? Okay, I'll give you an example. Sometimes we're afraid to walk into a room or try out for a team because someone said, oh, that organization or that coach is biased and they only like particular players that are of this height or have this skill set or are from this neighborhood. So because of that assumption, we've already come to a conclusion that we're not going to walk in, into that, that space and even try out for that team. Right? We have came to a conclusion that was not vetted, there was no research done, it was not conclusive, and therefore we lose out on this opportunity and we blame it on something that was not even a fact because we didn't vet it ourselves. That's the problem with assumptions, but that's also the power of assuming where it doesn't benefit you, right? So you got to consider that. And this is very important, right? For young folks listening, you need to keep this in mind. Don't make your decisions based off of what someone else has told you or shared with you or their own experience alone. Vet it for yourself. Question it. Challenge it. There's more to the story, right? Why did this coach not like you in particular? What did you do or didn't do? What didn't you bring to the table? What did you bring to the table? What, were the co what was the coach looking for? Did you know what the coach was looking for? And did you bring that to the table? Right? These are questions that I would ask. Right? So these are the questions I want you to start considering. How about just having a conversation with that coach? Hey, coach, what are you looking for? Right? Go directly to the source and find out what's the need. What's the problem? And how can I be the solution to that problem? If I vet it and I see that I'm not the solution for it, guess what? I know that situation is not for me. Then I'll feel more at peace with my decision and move on to the next opportunity, right? But it can't just be based solely on someone else's assumption. 
right? Or experience. The next thing is our emotions, right? Sometimes our emotions get the better of us and we are unable to process our thoughts vividly, right? Humans are extremely emotional and innate feelings are great influencers in our decision-making process. If you didn't know that, now you know, right? It's not always a bad thing, so let's embrace our emotions more. Sometimes you can't just wear it on your sleeve and think that it's always accurate. Your emotions can misguide you and mislead you in certain scenarios. Depends on where you're trying to navigate. Okay? A situation where your emotions might be um, a good piece of uh, advice or guidance is your intuition, your gut feelings. Right? Sometimes when you listen to them, oftentimes they are right. Okay? But in a situation where it requires you to be thinking and you get angry and you respond with anger, you may not get the results that you want. Two different scenarios require two different sets of emotions and reactions. So you have to process that. Okay? So just don't forget, it's not always a bad thing. So let's embrace our emotions a little bit more. Then we have language. This is where a lot of us fall short. When I say us, I'm speaking about um, majority of people that are within my circles um, and just slightly beyond, right? that don't necessarily have the language to be able to articulate themselves. The words we use are the connectors of critical thinking, right? Our thoughts are vague at first, right? Our thoughts are just ideas. They're too broad and, and so forth, right? But they become more clear and concise the moment we apply clear language to define them, right? And solve the problem. So I might have a vague idea, but when I'm forced to have to articulate it to somebody and explain it to them, Guess what? I find the words to make it clear because I want to make sure they understand this vague idea that I originally had up here. So language, right, from up here through the mouth, that, connect, that connection is very critical. And we need to make it more often, right? So develop your vocabulary, right? Learn new words that will allow you to engage with different people of different um, caliber, uh, skill sets, and, and so forth, Okay. So the words that you use have a great impact. And that's something that you need to be um, aware of. The arguments, right? <clears throat> the arguments. This stage is the process, right? And the process is actually essential because the word argument does not refer to people disagreeing with each other at all. Right? Why don't we adopt the concept of an argument being a list of well-reasoned assumptions and premises? Why not? Okay? So, rather than saying, I'm going to argue with somebody, no. How about we say, I'm going to give you a list of reasons, right? Or assumptions or experiences as to why I came to this conclusion about this subject matter. That's a better approach. Because the minute we hear argument, then part of our brain shuts off. And what happens is we become militant. I need to defend this no matter how ignorant or wrong it is. I need to prove this person that I'm right and they're wrong. It becomes a right and wrong situation, which means nobody is willing to give any ground. Which also means no one's going to benefit in any form of educational purposes in this exchange. Right? We all lose because we walk away with the same information we came in with. We didn't adopt anything new. We didn't embrace anything new. And therefore, guess what? I came in as I am. And I'm leaving the same way. I did not evolve. In fact, this debate or argument that you want to call it made me either the same person or worse than I, I was when I came in. Right? Because it's a waste of brain cells and energy. There's no benefit to me. I did not evolve. Right? There's no evolution process. So you have to factor that in. Right. Um, there are plenty uh, of fallacies, right? A fallacy is a belief or a conclusion that is reached through unsound logic. It's an argument that doesn't stand under any heavy scrutiny. Right. It just wouldn't stand if I was to question it. Right. So we have to avoid using fallacies in our arguments or debates. 
but understand that sometimes a fallacy can achieve outstanding results. Remember the old saying, even a broken clock is right twice in a day. So when you think about it like that, even though, right, my approach is of unsound logic, I may be right, depends on the scenario in which I use that fallacy. Right? So a broken clock should not be telling you time. Right? But yet, it's right at least twice in a day. And what that's telling you is, I could be wrong, but in a different setting, I'm also going to be right with the same logic that does not apply to this one. But it may apply in a different scenario. Right? So be aware of that. The fallacy, you know, may not be accurate in some settings, but it definitely may work and benefit you in others. So don't disregard them, but be mindful of them. Okay? Then we also have logic. This is something that I find is missing quite a bit in today's society. Pardon me a second. Now, logic is a word for structured thinking. If we are logical, we can replace a false premise or assumption with a, a valid one. Right? So applying logical perspective to all the gathered information can change right, our entire vantage point on any situation. Being logical means you've taken everything into account. It also means that you're being practical about the situation. Because being practical helps in a lot of situations, right? Because you might have somebody telling you, hey, listen, you need to have a budget and work that budget. But then you're saying to yourself, but I can't afford to save, you know, um, $50 every paycheck. Now, you have a credit card bill payment that you make every paycheck, and that's, let's say, $200, but you can't afford to save $50 a paycheck because right now you're living check to check, hand to mouth, right? But being practical, you can say, you know what? I won't worry about the budget now because I can't afford to save $50. But being practical, I can always say, wait a minute, that bill payment is going to be finished after two more payments. So if I finish those two payments, then I'm going to have an extra $200 that I can use. That's being logical. The budget may not be logical in the moment, but being practical about it and, and looking at my situation for what it is, being honest about it and being realistic about it, I can see that in the future, the budget may make sense because I will have that extra funds of $200 once this bill has been cleared, this debt has been cleared, right? Right? So just being logical and practical, um, right, can be very, very beneficial. So you have to be open to how you process that information. Then we have uh, problem solving, right? Although critical thinking doesn't necessarily make the world a better place, but it will make the world an interesting place to live. Let's, Let's call it what it is. Knowing how to solve a problem and actually taking the steps to resolve the problem are two completely different things. Unfortunately, many of the decisions that we make are made with unproven assumptions, right? F- uh, funding the conclusion, concluded uh, decision that we end up at. This is where we become products of our upbringing, our history, our socioeconomic status, our social circles, our religion, culture, beliefs, and our environments. Okay? This is just what it is. Some pros of critical thinking. I'll leave you with this. It allows you to make better decisions. When you think critically, you can carefully, right, evaluate information and arguments in order to make sound evidence-based decisions. 
This can help you to avoid making decisions that are based on your biases, assumptions, and incomplete information. Solve problems effectively. That's another benefit, right? It allows you to solve these problems. When you consider different perspectives and evaluate different solutions, you can actually develop creative and effective approaches to solving problems. Understand the complex ideas on a deeper level. That's what another benefit is, right? Because you analyze and evaluate all the information and arguments, right? You've gained over a greater understanding and underlying principles and ideas behind a concept or an argument. It also allows you to communicate more effectively. It allows you to develop, develop a clear and well-reasoned arguments um, that are supported by evidence. This can help you, right, to effectively convey your ideas and logic to others without confusion or misunderstanding. It also allows you to develop a growth mindset. And, and that is the belief that you can learn and grow through effort and perseverance. This is more powerful than you think, right? And through critical thinking, you learn to challenge your assumptions, your traditions, your belief systems, and to constantly seek out new information and perspectives. This can help you grow and develop further as a complete human being. Isn't that the goal? Isn't that what we all try to strive for? I would hope so, right? But I challenge you to get out in the world and think. But be critical and don't hold back. Ask all the difficult questions. Challenge all the norms surrounding you, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you or others feel, right? Before you leave for your journey, though, I would love it if you can just subscribe to the channel Hit that bell so you can be notified for any episode that drops. And if you're listening on Podbean, again, make sure you follow, share, and leave a comment. It's greatly appreciated. It doesn't cost you anything, but it's great. And, and it definitely supports the show as well as the channel. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I can't thank you enough for being here every week. And it is greatly appreciated. And for those listening on Podbeam, you already know what it is. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness.